Hey everybody, this is Grant from Grant K Photography. Today I'm going to teach you how to keyframe a time lapse in LR time lapse. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Lightroom <clears throat> and we're going to enter the library mode. We're going to navigate to our CR2 RAW files that are in a folder. They're here under previous import. There's 214 of them in this particular time lapse. And as you can see, I'll just go to look at one at a time. We've got a dolly move past gas pumps at the Flying A gas station here in downtown Truckee, right across the street from my office. I um, had a pretty good sunrise there the other day. So um, we're moving the camera, so we're not using a uh, bramping intervalometer, which is ball bramping intervalometer. We're just using a regular intervalometer. Um, and the camera's moving uh, along the axis of the dolly. So that being said, we started out underexposed and as you can see here, ended up at overexposed. <clears throat> um, and we've got a lot of things to clean up on this shot. Um, I'm going to go through the processing pretty quick and just keep it to, uh, keep it to the LR time-lapse keyframing procedure. So first thing we do is we go back to our light table grid. And we want to make the first photo of the time-lapse have one star. And we want to do that same thing to the last one. And then we want to go through and kind of look at the shot and try to pick frames. I'm going to make this a little bigger here. Try to pick frames in the time lapse where the light's changing. So not much is going on here. And then all of a sudden you can see the clouds are going from blue to gray. So I'll add a keyframe somewhere in that area. And then things start to get a little brighter here. I'll add another one star keyframe. And looks like we've got some color popping through the clouds around here. And then we've got our keyframe at the end. So these are going to be the points in the LR time lapse program where it interpolates the different values between the settings that we set here in Lightroom. So I'm going to filter based on the rating here. And we're going to see only these one, two, three, four, five shots that represent different stages in the time lapse. So what we want to do is we want to develop each one of these, starting with the first one, and then copy the development settings over to the other ones, but changing them one at a time. So I'm going to switch to the develop module. And let's see, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, not to be completely what I would do if I was really going to render this out, but you'll get the idea. want to get that real gloomy gray look in the clouds and that pink look coming out of the clouds here. Maybe a little too pink. <clears throat> All right, we're going to throw a crop on this to get rid of the lens hood, which I uh, put on backwards. It happens to the best of us. But since we're moving the camera, we're going to be cropping to 16 by 9 anyway. So we're going to crop in just like that, get rid of the bottom of the gas pumps. And we've got all of our development parameters now set for the shot. I'm going to add a little bit of shadows. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to hit Control A, select all of those, making sure that you start with the first one selected, and then hit Sync. We're going to synchronize everything across all these shots. So give that a second to catch up, and you're going to say right away, whoa, we're totally blown out at the end. That's fine. Remember, we're going to go through these one at a time, and we're going to change the development parameters, and then let LR time lapse interpolate the difference between all those values for us. So the second one looks like it's getting a little too purple, so I might bring that down a bit, and uh, bring the white balance down a little bit as well. It actually might, might make it go a little bit yellower. The idea is that you want to ramp these things up, and you don't want to ramp them up and then down. So, for example, we started here with this first shot. We're at 9,675 plus 12. Go to the second one, we're increasing the uh, yellow in the white balance and decreasing the tone. So I'm going to deselect, Control D, and then I'm going to take this frame here and then synchronize it across the rest to carry that change in the white balance. <clears throat> so then I'm going to go to this third keyframe, and it looks like the sky's getting a little too blue again, so I'm going to need to drag that white balance out some more to the right 
exposure needs to come down because we're shooting a constant time lapse. So as the sunrise got brighter, we need to bring the exposure down. Bring the highlights down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to deselect again, Control D, select this one, then select the next two, synchronize. You can see that we're getting a little bit better. We'll take a look at this shot here, and we need to bring the exposure down even more. And just see that beautiful orange light on the bottoms of some of those clouds there. I think the uh, white balance might need to go up a little bit more. Control D. And then we're going to synchronize the last shot. Synchronize everything. And then Control D again. And now you can see you might have to bring the exposure down just a little bit at the end. So now going through, we've got our first keyframe our second keyframe where the white balance is going up, the third keyframe where the exposure is going down, and the white balance is going up a little bit. White balance goes up a little bit more, the exposure comes down even more, and then the exposure comes down again. Okay, so now we've got our keyframes and our development parameters. So what we need to do now is we need to write the metadata from these keyframes into XMP sidecar files that LR Timelapse can pick up in order to do its grab its points on the interpolation curve. So in order to do that, if you just do it now, where you go save metadata to file, and, then, and you're in the develop module, it will only save to the one that you have selected, which right now is this here. So what we need to do is do this in the library module. We make sure we have all keyframes selected, and we go metadata, save metadata to files, hit continue, and that's taken care of. At this point, we need to load LR time lapse. So we're going to go to our raw folder, and we're going to watch. And LR time lapse is going to load all of the CR2 images in the folder. You can see right away it picked up the keyframes, <clears throat> and it's now going through. <clears throat> the keyframes have these blue dots next to them where it says keyframe, and you can see it's building the luminosity curve by looking at the average value of every shot in the time lapse. This yellow here looks at our exposure values. If we hit all, it'll show you the white balance values. So what we need to do is just wait for it to actually catch up. <clears throat> you can see it's going down the screen here. And this is always a good idea when you load a folder to let LR time lapse calculate that luminosity curve so that you can put your exposure curve on top of it turn off all, and these are the items that you've changed. Put your exposure curve on top of it to make sure that you're bringing down the exposure as your luminosity is going up. So we'll wait a little bit here and watch that build. <clears throat> we seem to have uh, picked a good keyframe here. You can see that bump in exposure, and then it gets pretty much a linear increase. Or we should have a linear decrease here in a second. All right, we're almost there. We don't have any flicker to take out of the sequence because I used the lens twist method um, because I wanted the uh, gas pumps in the shot in sharp relief and focus. Okay, so we're only going to be in the basic workflow module. So what we do now <clears throat> is we click auto transition. And you can see now this exposure value curve, the yellow line, these numbers here, the program has instantly interpolated the values between the keyframes. And it's done the same thing with the white balance and the highlights. You can see those values are all going down on smooth curves. If you look at the highlights, smooth curve, exposure, smooth curve, the white balance is a smooth curve as well. It's exactly what we want. So at this point, we hit Save XMP. There we go. We now have sidecar files in that folder. We can go back to Lightroom, and we're going to unfilter right now. We're going to hit Control D, deselect, just the keyframes. <clears throat> and we're going to then hit Control A. I have to excuse my puppy there. Hit Control A. And we're going to go metadata, read metadata from files. Hit read, and this takes a while. 
you can see it chugging up here. Lightroom is going to read the interpolated values of all of the development parameters from LR time lapses, XMP sidecar files, and then we'll be able to see them. And as you can see here, it's rendering the previews are going from as they were shot to the gradual ramp of all the values between the keyframes. So we're effectively slowly changing the white balance and the exposure on every shot through this sequence. At this point, this is all we need to do, and the next step would be to go out into your nonlinear editing software, such as Adobe After Effects, and import all of the CR2 files in this folder. Or you can export JPEGs from Lightroom and import those directly into your NLE. So what we do to do that is we right click down on the film strip and export. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do uh, 1920 by 1080 JPEG, 72 DPI at 90 quality. And we put those into our folder, make a new folder called JPEG output, <clears throat> select folder, and Lightroom will generate JPEGs of every single one of these files. Uh, it's going to take a while, so go grab a coffee, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. First though, before we look at the finished time-lapse that we keyframed with LR time-lapse, let's look at what the original undeveloped shot would have looked like straight out of the camera. So that was the uh, unedited version, and here is what we did by keyframing the development parameters in LR time-lapse. Stay tuned for more tutorials from me. Thanks and have a great day.